would have invested in, um, what do you call it, in Popeye stocks before today. Would have been billionaires, dude. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Would have been billionaires. All right, everybody, welcome to Hot Couch Potato, the podcast where we talk about curiosity and video games. My name is Brent, aka Boo Up. I'm here with my man Rick, aka A New Perfect Day. What's going on, man? You know, half of Four Chan is actually <laughs> <laughs> safe. Safe it is. Oh, so, okay. if you uh, visit the site, there's like it'll, it'll say boards in the main page, and there's like a bunch of links, and the links are pretty much just you know categories of where to to browse the internet. Uh huh. The only thing you want to stay away from is the right side, which is the adult, and the miscellaneous. Uh huh. The rest you can like search anything like video games, anime, and the people there, the the mod, I guess the the GMs or whatever you call those people. Mm-hmm. But they they literally ban anybody, and the community is pretty good at banning people who post things that are out of that category. So like okay. if you post anime in a video game section or something like that they'll like flag it down and you know they'll either warn you delete your post delete that post or and they're and they're pretty fast too you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. so yeah wherever you're whatever category you're browsing just make sure you're posting under that whatever it is so like if you're video games make sure you post things about video games yeah oh, okay have you been onto an online internet forum where you agree with everything where you just are interested in everything that people in the forum are talking about no i Same. don't agree with anything <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny because they just come up with these random things that they their beliefs and incorporate it and then the trolls come out and destroy that so uh see so is are they good at um i guess banning the trolls as well or yes. deleting some of those comments or is everything yeah, especially if it there? gets like more hateful and things uh, okay out of okay. control so at a certain they'll, point. yeah yeah they'll start like uh flagging them and they get banned and all that stuff but there are certain i think certain boards on the on the, the side that actually is not moderated because it's it's completely random and uh-huh, uh-huh. yeah like anything is anything goes so that's the scary stuff <laughs> the scary stuff dude <laughs> the yeah the dark side of the internet it's yeah, not even the, the true the side dark of internet it's the dark side of the internet <laughs> yep yep so yeah uh, you can visit 4chan just anything but those categories you sound you sound like mufasa right now telling simba <laughs> <laughs> all of that is his kingdom except for that dark shadowy part dude <laughs> yeah and you're gonna go in the dark shadowy part <laughs> just like simba did man <laughs> you're fucked up by some hyenas man <laughs> um i'm i'm 100 percent with you though as big and as vast the internet's the world basically and as vast as it is i don't think i've been to a forum or any kind of message board or chat room or anything where I 100% agree with everything that everybody's saying. I guess that's the the natural way of things, but usually there's something, you know, that would keep you coming back to share your opinions on different things, and people would give you insight one way or another that's agreeable. Yeah, they are like that a lot. More often than not, though, even if I read a good opinion or something like that, well, maybe that's the... Maybe that's the the uh just the basis of of having public discourse about things is there's always the contrarians right there's always mm-hmm. someone that's gonna say, "Well, that's not right or that's not that doesn't make sense, that's not logical or anything like that, so I mean, that's why, huh, yep, and they get under your skin too when you yeah. uh, and you start they start pointing out things and they're like and you're like why do you think like that why do you want to you know yeah they don't even attack the subject anymore they attack the person or the yeah i call that victim, victim blaming you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait i don't think that's what that means <laughs> <laughs> Generally, 
really is like when they go off topic, you know, and they blame other things that are around that topic or subject, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's like, okay, why are why are we talking about this? And yeah, you know, that's wild, man. But no, I think I think it's cool. Um, it's funny too. I'm super. I'm always late when it comes to. I don't really use the internet like that or keep um up to date on a lot of stuff. So sometimes I'll just go on Reddit or to see what the news is or what's going on right mm. and i'll be super late to it so i'll read through what people are saying about it and then there'll be one thing i agree with and one person who's a contrarian right below them and i'll think of this great response in my head or you know things to poke holes into what they're being contrarian about mm -hmm. and then right below that will be someone who's making my points for me i'm like oh okay cool let me get away from my keyboard it's already done <laughs> <laughs> So there's two situations with that. For me, when I start seeing stuff like that, I kind of just like close the tab and move on to something. <laughs> you just walk away? You walk away? Yeah, because when, back in the day, I used to actually get into full-blown arguments, you know, try to debunk their theories and whatnot. <laughs> but then I got to the point where I'm like, oh. I am spending a lot of my energy <laughs> <laughs> trying to debate some random stranger danger on the internet, you know, and uh -huh, then, uh -huh. but my cousin, on the other hand, he loves to make other people, you know, like debunk their theories and like prove them wrong. You know, that's my cousin, John Raymond. So yeah, he will go onto the, the forum, and if he, like, disagrees, he will, like, debunk it and destroy that other person's <laughs> <laughs> until until either they give up or, you know. I think one time he, like, showed me, like, this huge debate, and it just went on for, like, pages and pages. And I was like, god damn, you spent a lot of time, you guys, going back and forth. Uh -huh. Why are you guys arguing <laughs> you know, it's like you guys don't know each other why does it matter and he's like because i need to prove him wrong like, oh, all right <laughs> he's probably wrong you know I don't... so yeah i just learned to step away and like yeah i don't know i have add and all that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I i think i'm i'm with you on that as well i mean i wouldn't really walk away but i think that by the time I get to some of these debates, all the points are made that I would be willing to make anyways, you know? Yeah. I, I do get to them super late or when it's long drawn out already, so there's no point to really uh, beat a dead horse. People do that, though. There's a, a big circle jerk on the internet all the time where you get to a point where you're at the end of an argument and it just goes back to the beginning, you know, and then people start arguing it over and over again as new people yeah. come in. So that happens a lot too. So I don't want to add to that, dude. I want to step away from that infinite loop of circle jerkism. Yeah. And I think I kind of do what you do though. Like I, so when I see something and they, they say opinion in my head, I already have like a counter argument, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I'm already anticipating somebody down the line <laughs> in this long string of comments has we'll the same, same thought exactly. of yeah. my yeah of mine and we'll already have posted and i scroll down through the comments i see it and i'm like thank you and then i <laughs> go on to the next next thing i see the text above your head faith in humanity restored <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so the main reason we're talking about this is because just maybe 10 minutes ago i just delved into a super random part of the internet man Tech talking to me about uh, 3D modelers and animators that are out there and just can just make anything and post it on the internet nowadays. Yeah. Um, and I just scratched the surface. I don't think I'm willing to dive anywhere closer. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it's just it's just wild. And then just talking about how curiosity kills the cat, man. Of course, you know I'm looking at a website and it says NSFW, not safe for work. So what's the first thing I do? I click it. And it's, <laughs> and it's someone breaking their ankle and oh they tr get tripped it's during a soccer game when they trip and then <laughs> they're laying on the ground and they pull their foot up it's facing backwards and shit oh, dude. Ugh. yeah i try to avoid those especially when i'm in those kind of area boards 
you know, like you scroll down and then you see a picture and I'm like, yep, nope, I already know what this is going to be about. <laughs> and I scroll really quickly, but sometimes, you know, you see it right away and I'm like, oh, God damn it. You know, I try yeah, to avoid yeah. that. But see, that's the thing. I had a lot. I have I had so many chances to not click the link. I saw it was not safe for work. I saw a description of what was going on. And still, I went through and clicked the link, man. <laughs> it's, it's like I wanted to do it to myself. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be good. You'll fit right in for 4chan. <laughs> no, nah, I'll be scarred, man. I think I'll be scarred. Um, but yeah, no, super funny. Uh, happy Halloween to everybody. How was your Halloween, man? I don't remember. Um, Did you pass me, out candy? Let me, let me, uh, yeah, let me look up the calendar because... <laughs> I mark my memories by days, but I can't remember. <laughs> Are you <laughs> writing down them. your memories, dude? No, no. I just. Are you memento in real life? <laughs> this guy wakes up every morning and has no recollection of what happened before he was sleeping. <laughs> so he writes shit down in a journal, <laughs> takes pictures and shit. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. So I do remember. Well, I went to my parents' house, and uh-huh. yeah, surprisingly, I didn't see a lot of children or kids or whatever trick or treating on my block neighborhood. So I was like thinking, maybe, maybe things have changed. Like, do people go trick or treating? Do they go to the nice neighborhoods? Do they go to the <laughs> mall? <laughs> that that is what it is. Yeah, they go to nice neighborhoods for sure, man. <laughs> so yeah, like yep. It was only like two kids on my block, and I was like, okay, I guess the rest of the candy's for me. Man, that's wild. You would think that people, especially in your parents' neighborhood, would be around trick-or-treating. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's a neighborhood neighborhood where there's just a bunch of houses. You can go door-to-door. Yeah, and surprisingly, I didn't see anybody, so I was like, wow, like maybe things have changed. You know, Millennials don't trick-or-treat. <laughs> yeah, so. or maybe they do just really go to the nice neighborhoods, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was my first time having a Halloween here at the complex I'm living at. So I was just expecting, you know, just the people in the complex would go around and trick or treat at everybody else's houses. We had candy. I turned on the front door, uh, the porch light, you know, because isn't that the sign that you have candy is if you turn on the light outside in the front yard. Yeah. And yeah, only three kids rolled through all at the same time. And that was it. So now I just have a grip of candy out here chilling exactly so and that's the thing i was like why (sighs) i don't know what you're gonna do with all that candy i (laughs) ate mine so wait you ate all of it already i ate a lot of it i only took like a handful of candy from my parents and i was like oh okay okay i'll be and then i went back like earlier today and yeah they still had a huge tub of it yeah no we still have a huge tub i've been eating m&ms every day (laughs) <laughs> you just have a, a lot of chocolate out here man but um yeah no it's interesting did you what about work did anybody dress up for work or did you dress up for work so there's a couple of my coworkers that did dress up for work and mm-hmm. yeah one of our friends did too but uh other than that yeah i didn't really see too much i was I think I was closing my eyes or I just wanted to do work that day or something. <laughs> just didn't socialize, talk to anybody <laughs> yeah, out there. Yeah, I, was, I couldn't <laughs> think. <laughs> That's funny, man. Yeah, since I work at the the county operations center, basically where everything's held at or every part of the county has an office there, uh, they had this kind of Halloween fair, talent show, all that stuff, so everybody was dressed up. I didn't do anything throughout the entire day, but people watched you know, I'm on the fourth floor, so I was just looking out my window, looking at all the people walking around like a creeper dude in there, <laughs> different outfits and stuff. But people get into it, man. <clears throat> I mean, there's two stages in life where you really, you know, get into Halloween is when you're a little kid and then when you're old and washed up. So maybe yeah, we're not. So maybe what, we're not like, there yet because the we didn't category? dress up <laughs> because we didn't dress up for Halloween. I didn't dress up for Halloween this year for work. You know, you didn't just so maybe we're not in the old and washed up part yet. Maybe we're still like, we're still too cool for school. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because <laughs> then I talked to one of my coworkers about it. It is there's that mentality where man, it's so boring every day. Might as well spice things up and wear a costume to work. And I don't feel like shit is boring every day. I you know have fun with what I do and shit. So I don't need to spice things up with a costume. 
Uh, so yeah, maybe we're not old and washed up yet. <laughs> Here's the thing. I totally forgot it was Halloween that day. <laughs> <laughs> Until I saw a whole, like, couple of my coworkers dressed up, I was like, oh, shit, it is Halloween. Damn, I wasn't even paying attention. <laughs> uh, that's, so you don't even know if kids were around your complex or your your apartment. Uh, oh, yeah, that trade. day. Yeah, because I was out. And yeah. I, it's, all, it's pretty much, like, guarded with a bunch of key fob stuff that you uh, have to get through. So, so you can't even walk through the like, halls like yeah, that. Yeah, you can't even go through the halls. But that would okay. be interesting if you're in an apartment you know kids are just going door to door that'd be a little strange but yeah that's interesting that's interesting um so yeah what else happened this week dude halloween good times um didn't do any adult partying this halloween that's something i need to do again next year man didn't we go out one time like downtown or something for halloween and drove around yeah oh yeah dude i do remember that see we didn't do that this year um, you need to do that next year. You need to take advantage of the good times like that. I thought um, we were gonna dress up like um. There's two ideas. We were supposed to dress up as the guy from Catherine. Yes, dude. We still need to do and, that. And then Korean boy band. <laughs> <laughs> we could probably pull off the Korean boy band, dude. We'll all just wear you know the same suit, but button it up differently each, so we have our own style each. You know. <laughs> We could do it, man. <laughs> there could be 20 of us, too. You know, there's about 80 people in each band out there. Is there a girl band in Japan with 30 members or something? Damn, 30? It's, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it, it's somewhere up there where it's unreasonable. Like, There's no way you're going to know the name of each person in the girl band. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess they just want to be Baskin Robbins, you know. So everybody has a member of the band that they relate with. There's 32 different flavors and shit, right? Yeah. <laughs> so Halloween. Oh, BlizzCon was this week. Uh, we don't really play Blizzard games, but from the looks of it, it looked pretty hype, man. Dude, did you see Overwatch cinematic trailer? Oh yeah, dude! I got the feels, man. That was dude. Yeah, I was getting kind of hyped. I was like, "Fuck, am I gonna have to buy this game?" <laughs> <laughs> What's crazy is I remember when we first bought Overwatch. I didn't realize that game came out maybe four years ago. Mm-hmm. It's been Damn. time, man. Yeah, yeah. That was fast. Because I remember you showed it to me. I played a little bit at your house, and I got hooked for a little bit. And then I was playing um, Lucio Ball and all that. Buying a bunch of skins for the yeah, that's why because the Olympics, so yeah. it has been around that long. Holy shit, man! Uh, but yeah, just going through all the cinematics was great. Uh, they got Overwatch Two, which is gonna have a PVE mode, which is kind of cool. Apparently, they they're doing something where because I've always asked this question too about Destiny. Why even come out with a Destiny Two? Right, just keep adding mm-hmm. expansions onto the regular Destiny. Um, but I think it's a similar situation for what they did with Destiny. They put it on a new engine um, so they could do more PVE stuff with it, which looks pretty cool. I don't know how uh, much people will play it since Overwatch is mainly known for PVP. I heard that you don't have to buy Overwatch 2 if you just do PVP, which which is pretty smart, I think, because there's a lot of people that are invested, put hundreds of dollars into loot boxes and shit, right? Yeah, that uh, we missed out on because <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of different costume skins in the loot boxes. And then yeah. if they're going to bring out more, I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah. It gets it gets too insane, man. Um, at the same time, too, it's kind of interesting they haven't put a story mode in for this long. Because all their trailers and shit, the game, Overwatch has a deep-ass story. And it's just a TF2 game where people fight each other, so... Yeah, watching that trailer, I, see, I wasn't even hyped, but I was just like, you know what, I'll check it out. And I did, and I was like, damn, this is bringing out a lot of feelings and emotions. This is, I might actually pick it up, or I have to check it out first, because I, w- I want to play that that co-op thing. Mm-hmm. I think it's like four people, wasn't it four players co-oping together, and you guys going through different waves of the enemy? That's what it was in the first <clears throat> in like the Halloween events and stuff in Overwatch. 
Uh, I like that a lot. Yeah, yeah. I hope I think they'll change it though. It'll actually be maybe a campaign or something. Um, because yeah, it was just protecting waves. We did that one, right? The Halloween one. Yeah. Where we had to defend against uh, who was it? Reaper. I think it was uh, Roadhog and someone else. We had to defend the front of the castle from. Um. Yeah, dude, that was super fun. So if they have more modes similar to that and maybe a whole story or narrative to go through, I think that would be pretty cool. Exactly. Um, yeah, I think they showed off two new characters and stuff like that. Uh, what else? They showed a new World of Warcraft expansion. They showed Diablo 4, which is kind of wild. Um, it was that sacrifice thing, right? Where, yeah, where yeah. I was like touching a hand, kissing it, and... <laughs> touching a hand, <laughs> <laughs> I'll say and this. I don't remember after that. <laughs> if anything, Blizzard, whoever they hire to make their cinematics or write those or do the voice acting, it's all fucking perfect, man. I kind of wish they would just make movies, you know, instead mm. of trying to do a live action World of Warcraft. I wish they would just do a whole cinematic of World of Warcraft, you know, or a whole cinematic of they they could really take over the world and be bigger than Disney if they start making movies, man. Pretty much, if they, yeah, yeah, if they just make those kind of movies with that certain animation, I, I was thinking the same thing. Because if they have, they could have kitty stuff with Overwatch. They could have those kind of stories. They could do a whole Avengers type shit with Overwatch, where that's, it's that's my yeah. One they need movie to have a series or yeah, something. Man. Yeah, but I was it's like man, they they could do that, you know, where they have a movie about each origin of each hero, you know, and then at the end they all go up against fucking Doomfist or something. Exactly. They could do something crazy like that, or they can even go more have adult animation things and do the Diablo stuff, which is super dark, or the WoW stuff, which is fantasy based and uh, has a lot of drama and things like that. They sky's the limit for Blizzard right now, man. Yep, they could really do anything they want, but um, they won't. They're just gonna do the same thing. <laughs> you don't think so? <laughs> they could fucking print money by making all because they have their stories are so deep now. You know, Warcraft has been around. I think they were saying twenty five years or some shit like that. So is Diablo. So this is, there's a lot of history that they can go over with that, um, and just make uh, movies. I think they already have books. That would just even add more onto what they have already with T-shirts. They have their own sports, esports leagues. They have toys and shit, man. They throw in cartoons in that. Ooh, dude. They might be yep. worth more than Mickey Mouse, man, I think, if they do that. They could do that, but I just have a feeling that they won't do that. <laughs> They're going to stick to it because, like, if they had this amount of time uh -huh. and four years, six years or whatever, whenever Overwatch came out, it's like, how come there was no changes, no additions, no series coming out? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think the executives thought, think, like, okay, we're a one-trick pony. You yeah. know, we're making a lot of money out of these video games, so let's just keep making more things with the video games. Yeah, yeah. And I think this is the first year that maybe it's been on a little positive uptick. I mean, uh, last year they had the mobile game, and then the year before that, I don't think they had too many updates. The year before that, everybody was complaining that there's no classic World of Warcraft, and now they're finally bringing it up. So I think they're finally on a little bit of an uptick i mean they have the whole thing with uh china and hong kong but i think they have enough goodwill where they could pull something like that off uh league of legends they're doing a cartoon and a movie i think right i think we'll see how yes. successful uh the league of legends cartoons are and that mm. will show how and i think if it is successful blizz is gonna be right there with them dude 100 percent, man that'd be good that'd be perfect yeah um, anything else you've seen from BlizzCon? Uh, I didn't see BlizzCon at all. I just saw that <laughs> one trailer. Yeah. Oh, and I, yeah, I saw pictures of it. And Jesus, it was like a huge stadium of people uh -huh. just, just watching the trailers. And I was like thinking, man, what if someone has to go to the bathroom? Do they have to stand <laughs> up <laughs> in the middle of the, the whatever crowd and, you know, like, 
walk in front of these people because they're all sitting down, you know? Yeah. Because so. you already know they were waiting around outside to even get inside for maybe get inside. three or four hours, man. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, that makes me miss PlayStation experience when we did that shit, man. Right, yeah. Man. I think we ruined our chances, so it'll never <laughs> come back. <laughs> Uh, so speaking of new media, uh, when it comes to video games, well, I guess The Witcher didn't start out as a video game; it was a book first. But new uh, Witcher trailer came out, man. What is your verdict from the person I know who loves The Witcher the most? So far, what I've seen from the latest trailer, it looked pretty good. And I haven't read the books, but people are saying like the books is really the best thing and i guess they're taking it from the books mm -hmm. and so yeah the way he was doing his combat it was just like the witcher like where he spins a lot and that's how you're supposed to fight i would think you know mm -hmm. like if you're surrounded by like three or four people and they're all going to hit you all at the same time so he's spinning around you know parrying people while at the same time attacking them so i was like thinking yeah i'm actually looking forward to watching this this series yeah, I think it looks great, too. I think I was interested since the first trailer. Uh, the only thing that was throwing it off was The Witcher. I don't know, man. He doesn't look like Geralt, man. But I guess, how are you going to find someone that looks like Geralt, right? I feel like he's too buff, man. Yeah, like, I guess, yeah. That was the thing that was just, like, drawing me off. I was like, uh, he doesn't look similar to to him, but now... I don't know the way he's fighting. I was like, okay, I can accept this is a different take of it. Yeah, yeah. You know. So maybe we don't have to buy a uh, Disney Plus, man, since Netflix then, is coming through with this. Yeah, it's gonna be a tough <laughs> one. <laughs> I want to be a bounty hunter. <laughs> man, no, no, that show still looks. Good. I think they came out with a trailer as well. It's just Netflix and Disney Plus battling, man. Um. I was looking recently at the lineup for what's coming out when Disney Plus. Disney Plus comes out what next week? Or this week? Uh, the thirteenth, I think. Next week. Okay. Yeah, in a couple of weeks. Not like ten days. So there's only gonna be six Marvel movies on there, man. What? I thought yeah. everything was gonna no. be on there. No, there's that only gonna be six. That doesn't make sense. I know. I think Netflix still has the rights to maybe Thor Ragnarok and. Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Um, Endgame's not going to be on Disney Plus until December. I think they only have Iron Man 1 and 3 or something like that. There's none of the Doctor Stranges. Um, I think it's only up to Avengers Age of Ultron. None of the Captain Americas are on there either. It's, it's kind of interesting, man. I don't know how they made these choices. You would think they'd want to start off big. Um just have everything on there right away. But maybe they're just doing the slow drip where it, they're thinking, oh, it's going to be worth it if you subscribe longer than just the first month, you know? Wow. On the other side of it, they have all those uh, Disney Channel movies we grew up with, like Johnny Tsunami and Punks and all that. Uh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> what? You're not tired of those? You you never watched? Uh, I want Brink everything. Or anything? I was oh, thinking, okay. if I'm okay, gonna pay okay. seven dollars, I better have every freaking thing on there that's Disney related <laughs> <laughs> at my disposable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, cartoon wise, um, the stuff like Mary Poppins from the '50s and '60s, all that stuff is definitely gonna be in there. Um, some t I think they have every season of The Simpsons on there. Star um, Wars? Star Wars, all the Star Wars movies are on there, and then they're going to come out with the, the different series. The only thing that's really lacking is, yeah, Marvel. And then Spider-Man is never going to be on there because Sony still has that. Um, so it's it's just interesting, man. I don't know. When it comes to intellectual properties and since Stanley created these guys and he's dead, someone inherited that from them and they're just allowing Disney to do all this stuff essentially. Um, it It's kind of messy and convoluted, man. Um, and it sucks for us as fans, but as someone who creates something, I get it. You want to get paid and not everybody's willing to pay that price. You know, there's a mm -hmm. reason Disney plus isn't 20 bucks a month. It's $7 a month. It's because, 
you know, they're trying to make the best deals they can out there. Um, yeah, no, it sucks for us, but shit, hopefully they catch up one day. Yeah. Well, I guess I can just let it be a trial run and see what, how things go. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm really waiting. I'm probably just wait until the Mandalorian is done, dude. <laughs> when the whole series comes out and is over and then I'll just binge it for a month and then cancel it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea, my friend. <laughs> Speaking of, did you ever finish, um, Game of Thrones, man? Yes. Oh, okay, okay. What are your thoughts? I don't think we ever talked uh, about it. I think we probably did. I don't remember, but eh, it, I think the last season they rushed it like yeah. way too crazy. Because I was like, I yeah, I think we did talk about this. But anyways, yeah, I was watching rewatching the the first season, and the way they were just telling the story was like very subtle, but everything was like. Yeah, I don't know how it was. It was articulate, and you know the 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 environment was very rich and mm-hmm. things like that. The plot too, and I was like, man, the first season compared to the last season. The last season is like you know, like oh, let's just throw everything in one spot, you know, like burn everything and kill this guy, kill that guy. I was thinking from the first season, I was like, man, why didn't you like? come up with like an interesting conspiracy plot to kill off some of the characters mm-hmm. and whatnot. But mm-hmm. uh, I don't know. And I think people were like saying like the difference between the first four seasons and the last four where like it was different, you know, it was like first was like done by George. Oh, the books ended. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and yeah. then the last four was actually like kind of, they're just making up their own interpretations of the book or whatever, mm-hmm. or not even of the book, but of what Could his happen. ideas. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think so. See, they just had the main story points, like, spoiler alert, Hodor holding the door for them and then Daenerys dying. But how to get there, they kind of made up on their own. I think I'm with you on that. Exactly. That. Man, how, how mighty have... Fallen. I think I saw uh, a picture of a Halloween costume, and it was a girl wearing a trash bag, and it said "Final Game of Thrones season" on her trash bag. <laughs> Saying it was trash. <laughs> so it's, it's kind well of well played. Yeah. Well played. But it's still that how I think you and I talk about what we experience when you finish an anime or something like that. There's just that hole that's left there that you try to fill by watching another anime. Nothing's filled that yet for Game of Thrones, for me at least. Um, I'm still looking out there for a show. I mean, I'm excited for the show called The Expanse that's going to pop on Amazon Prime soon. Um, but other than that, yeah, there's nothing really. So I hope either The Mandalorian or The Witcher kind of scratches that itch. Yeah, and I hope they they do a very good job explaining the lore of each you know, series of mm-hmm. The Witcher mm-hmm. and, or The Mandalorian, you know, like instead of just explaining it verbally, like, oh, yeah, we've been in this war against, you know, like just have a couple battles here and then and and stuff like that. So, yeah, build the drama through dialogue. I'm with you on that. That's why I feel like it was so much more worth it when the fights did happen in Game of Thrones. Yeah. In the beginning, even they skipped all the battles. You know, in I think the second season when they captured Jamie, they didn't even show that battle. It just showed them charging, fade to black, and then you captured Jamie Lannister. <laughs> it was, <laughs> that was it. But that doesn't matter how the battle went or it didn't matter to show it. What mattered was the result of what happened. Um, and yeah, they did lose, lose sight of that. So I'm with you. I think it's much more worth it if you have this good, rich dialogue between characters that builds the characters. And then just seeing all this crazy stuff happen to him exactly um, is totally worth it. Uh, something that's entertaining but hasn't really scratched the itch I've been watching recently is, is Tara's House, man, the new season. Have you been checking it out, dude? <laughs> nah, not yet. Uh, I think I've been holding off on that. Speaking of building good characters and then putting them through some shit, uh, the season's been pretty good, man. I'm on hey. episode maybe eight or something like that. Uh-huh. Maybe halfway through the season, right? 
but everybody's so agreeable. And, you know, there's three guys, three girls, and they kind of pair up, right? And it hasn't happened until maybe the last one or two episodes where uh, one of the girls' interests have started to collide um, because they got bored with this other guy. And it, it's getting spicy, man. The show's getting good, dude. Interesting. So Interesting. when you pick it up, you gotta let me know. And we got to pick our favorites, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Terrace House, dude. <laughs> um, let's see what else is going on. Oh, reviews for Death Stranding came out. We've talked about this a few times, and you said you're not really looking forward to it, right? Death Stranding, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm not so much either, uh, but after reading reviews, I might have to pick it up. Not immediately, but maybe eventually I'll pick it up. Um, just because the way everybody describes it. So the reviews for this game are either 10 out of 10 or 1 out of 10. There's no, there's no really in between, man. It's kind of interesting. It's either the game for you or a game that you hate. Um, Pretty much, and yeah, I was reading in their reviews too, mm -hmm. and it was very mixed, like very, very, very mixed. And you know, some people are like raving it as the best thing ever, and yeah, like you're saying, it was not good. And they're describing each point. Which I'm not going to spoil it, but mm -hmm. yeah, I did see that. Uh, did you see that <laughs> that Rick and Morty ad? No, no. Of of Death Stranding. What they did a crossover? How? Yeah, like a like a little commercial, and Hideo like allowed him to do a commercial uh -huh. of Death Stranding. So yeah, you should definitely check it out. It's pretty funny. So a lot of things is it's a walking simulator and all this stuff. A lot of games are walking simulators too. It just depends on the narrative that they show or the story they show, whether it's worth it or not. Um, shit, man. We played fucking... What's that game called? Oh, no. I forget it. Honey Pop. Oh. <laughs> we, we played Honey Pop, and that's just a puzzle game. But because we want to advance and see what the relationship with the girls is going to be like, we'll fucking play that shit. Then there's naked anime chicks at the end, so that doesn't hurt either. Um, what's the other game, too? Uh, starts with a mirror. Mirror, dude. <laughs> so I played. I actually played this fucking game, right? Yeah. I played it. I played past the first two stages. That game fucking kills me, man. Can we talk? Can we talk about this openly? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, how are you gonna have all this shit happening? Where you're? This is just a we. Okay, I can't, I don't even know where to start. Dude. <laughs> it's just. An anime lover's fucking dream, right? You're this king uh, or a duke or something, and you capture this uh, half dark elf assassin and shit, dude, and just put her in your torture chamber and shit. Yep. The part that gets me the most is why they have this beautiful orchestra music in the background. What is this all going on? Like, every time I get out of a puzzle or get out of a little cutscene, there's like this flute that plays in the background with all these chimes and shit and it's just like <laughs> what <laughs> that's all he could afford what are we fucking doing dude <laughs> that's that's all he could afford and then what's the second stage is the second stage that chick she's like a priestess or something dude uh -huh. and you're her senpai that's just punishing her and getting her to summon a fucking octopus monster and shit man <laughs> <laughs> oh my god after that i couldn't fucking play the game no more but believe me i tried to power through i was like naked anime chicks at the end this will be cool um but no man it's just the game you can, and then there's choices there's choices you can make in the game right and yep. it's basically how much of a dick can i be <laughs> and you can get there's <laughs> multiple endings and then you can see these multiple endings but both of them are pretty still horrible um and you watch how you just destroyed whoever's life um and how you destroyed the world or whatever and then you go back to the menu screen and it plays that fucking flute again dude <laughs> the same <laughs> fucking flute so it's it's just mixed messages dude mirror's fucking weird man and that's why it's one dollar <laughs> <laughs> uh we're fucking off track what were we talking about uh kojima oh yeah kojima kojima how do we get the fucking mirror dude i don't even know 
Uh, oh, because narratives, saying, narratives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it doesn't matter if it's a walking simulator. As long as the narrative's good or you have <laughs> naked anime chicks at the end, it'll all be good. <laughs> I doubt there's going to be naked. A- oh, well, you know, Kojima, there might be naked anime chicks at the end of this. So it might be worth it. Um, but yeah, just depending on the narrative and how it goes, I think it'll be it'll be one to tell. That and I think after the reviews came out, you really understand that it's subjective based on who's reviewing it right mm. um there's those people that just really don't like it they feel the gameplay is boring and uh the mechanics aren't good and it's a slog to get through and then you read other reviews where it's like oh he's experimenting and it's such a vast and lush environment to have an adventure through 10 out of 10 so i guess it's where your uh was it not tendencies but your preferences lie is how this game will hit you either really bad or really good and i think people just need to realize that games aren't meant for everybody and if it's not for you then fine let other people enjoy their shit man let the shit on their parade i feel like so many people hate kojima that they're willing to shit on other people that like his games you know Mm. And I'm guessing you got that from the dark side of the internet. <laughs> no, I think just in general. I think in general. And in in, on Reddit as well, I think, especially since people on Reddit are more computer-based, so they hate consoles anyways. The fact that Kojima hasn't really made a console game, that's probably started it, you know? And then the fact that some of his stuff is really obscure and people get those messages like oh you're not smart enough if you don't understand the hidden message behind metal gear 5 that kind of touches people the wrong way too Mm. um so i could see where an animosity can build um in in that way um because i think we've seen similar situations like this before where games have been hyped up to think that everybody would love it but when it comes out everyone's like what the fuck this game is crappy when they told you exactly what the game was going to be, you just got caught into the hype. I think the number one is No Man's Sky, right? Yeah. Everybody thought, oh, we're going to be space pirates. We can explore and have dog fights in space and then land and colonize fucking planets and stuff. When it came out, it turns out you just look for different kinds of animals on different planets and put them into a catalog. <laughs> and that's it, you know? Yeah. So I think only now is it catching up to be that that realization of what they were talking about before. But yeah, you you don't have to love every game, even though it's marketed to you and just exhaustingly on every TV screen. Um, it might not be for you, and that's fine. That's why I think this game is is showing more than any other. Um, so yeah, a game that's immune to that though is Final Fantasy VII Remake. I think everybody's gonna love that game, dude. What if you have extremists and they're going to hate the game? Mm. Have you ever seen uh, Jalen Silent Bob Strike Back? Yes. It's, yeah, that's going to happen, dude. I'm going <laughs> to go and knock on people's doors and then drop kick them. Uh, have you along so you can leg drop them while they're on the ground, dude. Just a bunch of stuff. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, man. No, it's fine. I mean, it won't bother me. I'll be too busy enjoying it, dude. You literally won't be able to rain on my uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake parade, man. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, like, avoid people for a while. <laughs> <laughs> avoid the internet and avoid everything and okay. just lock myself and just play it at, at my pace. Yeah. So I don't feel rushed, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, did you beat this one scene? Oh, did you beat this boss? Oh, here's a strategy guide. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm going to have my popcorn. I'm just going to enjoy it. <laughs> I'm going to have my own time. I'm going to wear my Snuggie, my toe socks, dude. <laughs> just enjoy them. Light some candles and just enjoy my own time with this shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so it'll be interesting. I think the game actually comes out this week. It's weird that they released the reviews so early. Uh, kind of makes me think that they were hoping the reviews would be a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> like oh yeah this game's gonna be so good we're gonna start the hype a week early when in reality it's it's such a mixed message so we'll see it'll be interesting to see how this game's received just by the general public and not reviewers 
whether the uh, lovers uh, kind of over are more than the haters of the game. We'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, what else is going on, dude? What games have you been playing this week? Mm, I only played a little bit of games this week. Mm -hmm. I've been pretty tired because it's crazy weather. It's pretty dry here in California. And mm -hmm. It's messing me up. Um, but other than that, I actually turned on some Octopath Traveler because I know I have to power through that. Oh, okay. And I got my third character, um, and then I turned it off after I saved him. And I thought <laughs> I was pretty good. I was actually sweating bullets, and I was like, God damn it. I thought I was like, I was really prepared. I had like 40 potions, um, you know, like 30 revives. Mm -hmm. And then by the time I was done, I was like down to like 10 of each. And I was like, Jesus. It was because... I don't know what I was thinking, but basically he kept one shotting like any of my characters. Oh, basically. shit. Uh -huh. um, but other than that, it wasn't too bad because, you know, you, the next turn you just revive that character. But uh -huh. it was like nonstop. So I was like, like thinking, man, am I good in RPG games anymore? <laughs> but other than that, yep, that was the game I've been playing. Um Oh, Tetris, I guess. I'm trying to get that theme. There's going to be a Pokemon theme for Tetris. Oh, wow. It's going to be November, I think November 8th or something like that. And we got to play some Monster Hunter too. Uh, yes. You, you did mention that you were playing, and I was like, damn it, I should have hopped on. Yeah, I did try for a little bit. Um, yesterday, I was fighting some Arch-Tempered stuff and trying to beat it, but I would always get hit like once and then I would just get comboed out of my mind. Um, so yeah, we got to do that. Uh, but I only played it for a little bit because uh, the Neo 2 beta came out this weekend. Um, I think it's available from the 1st to the 10th. So kind of have this whole week to play it. Um, and it's more of Neo, which is, is great. They changed a few things. I think they added more weapons. Um, they changed the skill trees. Uh, you can create your own character this time around. So I just made a, a chick um, since I'm I'm with it now. Now, you're, we used to be questioning, oh, why'd you make a girl character? And their argument would be, well, I'm going to be playing this game for 40 hours. I might as well stare at a girl character. I'm totally with that now, dude. Um, Who said that? Somebody, one of our friends said that. Was that you or Dustin? No, that one definitely wasn't me because I didn't believe it until now. <laughs> They said, yeah, like, if I'm going to be playing a game, I might as well be staring at a girl's ass like that. Yeah, they no, said I, that. I'm with that argument now, man. I'm with that argument now. And uh, you were there. You saw me create a character in Code Vein, right? Uh -huh. I was trying to do the same thing in, in Neo 2, but you can't change where the eyes are, <laughs> whether it's high on the inside the whites or low in the whites. So I couldn't quite do that. Uh, you can change their voice, though, and then even change the pitch so you can make it super high. Um, but, yeah, no, it's more of the same, so it's good stuff. I think a big complaint for everybody from the first Neo was that there wasn't a lot of enemy variety in it, and they definitely fixed that problem. There's all kinds of enemies in this one. Um, Mine and, was playing with people. Like, I hate it oh, where you yeah. have to beat the mission, and then you can invite them. Like, what's the point of fighting somebody if you already beat the mission to get you know yeah that's very true but at the same time i understand it now it's because neo is a loot game right you get mm. if you finish a level you get 30 different kinds of the same sword but depending on what stats you want you can pick it up um and then remember you can transfer stats over from one sword to another to try and make a perfect weapon to your play style um they should so make it like why. monster hunter where you know you could build it you can i think there's that soul match thing and then yeah passing over skills from one thing to another um but i think you're right looking for the specific weapon you want is kind of tricky it's not as easy as like oh i want to fight this one monster and get his parts and make this specific weapon with these specific attributes i think it is it is a little bit more random or it couldn't be i mean um, I haven't played. Well, I really haven't grinded in Neil like that. I just use whatever hit the hardest, right? Yep. 
So, but everything's there still, man. You got all your tricks. I think they got rid. They actually did. They got rid of the slowdown, uh, jutsu from the first one. I think you can only paralyze and throw caltrops down now, um, and maybe smoke bombs and things like that. But believe me, I looked. I was trying to look for you, man, because <laughs> <laughs> you know you you only get skill points if you use those skills. So if I'm using the sword the whole time. I'm going to let get a lot of skill points for the sword. Um, so I started using items like throwing bombs and um, all these items, and that started unlocking the ninjutsu skills. And I was looking for the one that slows enemies down and, and, and couldn't find it, dude. So I think they realized the cheese, man. Damn it. Because yep. that, I remember too, it was like, it lasted for like almost, I don't know, like 20 seconds or something like yeah. that. And you could get then, six of them or something, right? Yeah. yeah. And then they said, you know what? Let's reduce it. So then the time for them to be slow was like, I don't know, like five seconds. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's still manageable. And then now you're saying that they removed it completely? Shit. Yeah. At least, or at least I haven't found it. So maybe, I don't know, when you jump in and, and check it out, you might find it. But yeah, I couldn't find it, man. I'll say this. If it wasn't for that, there would have been no way I could have beat, uh, spoiler alert, Nobunaga and his wife at the same time in the first Neo, dude. <laughs> there was <laughs> no way I was going to beat that on my own without that slow down jutsu, man. Yeah, because I like slow one and then I would just fight the other one. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. Keep yeah. doing it, rinse and repeat. Yep, yep. Just burn down his wife as fast as I could. Because her attacks are horrible, man. Yep. She had all those that slowed you down and her AoEs and shit, man. So as long as you slowed her down and killed her. for Because Nobunaga, you can more or less dodge his shit don't get hit or else you'll get fucked up but her hers were the worst man yep um so no that game is still good they have a switch axe in neo 2 S switch axe yeah i think it's legitimately called a switch axe too it looks like a it looks like a uh i think one form of it is an axe and then it turns into a what are those called man the ones that the grim reaper has a scythe that's what it is. What? Yeah, so so they're trying crazy. to do some Bloodborne stuff? I guess, but I think it'll... I haven't really messed around with it yet, but from what I can imagine, you know how we can change stances and things like that in the middle of your combos? Mm -hmm. I, I think you could pull off some pretty crazy shit um, with that because then in one form it's just the axe and then you switch to the heavy stance or the high stance in mid-combo and then it turns into the the uh the scythe i think that'd be pretty sick man so i'll have to check that out the enemies are a lot harder i think yeah i was just getting into there's a <clears throat> new wider variety of enemies and i think now um you know how we get smarter as gamers we figure out the cheese to every boss in dark souls and neo and all that uh -huh. and bloodborne um now they're making enemies to specifically target the cheese points. So now there's <clears throat> enemies that just have full front cone attacks, and then there's enemies that have a full AoE attack. Regular enemies, dude, that you just walk into and will respawn when you uh, hit the next bonfire or checkpoint. Their attacks are just like boss attacks, and it's it's a pain in the ass. I have not found... There, for example, there's this snake chick like uh like a gorgon like medusa type enemy yeah uh -huh. and i haven't figured out a efficient way of killing her yet every time i fight her i have to eat 10 potions man and by the time i kill her i gotta go back to the shrine again and re-up on potions man it's horrible <laughs> and i have to fight her every time i go through this fucking hallway <laughs> it's the worst I, dude as long as they give me my chain and sickle I oh, think we're yeah. gonna be a okay on tripping <laughs> every humanoid monster. But oh yeah, but this is a fucking snake, so you can't, dude. Ah, oh, uh, so, uh, ninjutsu past it, <laughs> go invisible. Yep, uh, I'm pretty prepared. Yeah, yeah. So there's poison yeah. it. There's some new features too, like you can get. Um, I don't know what it's called. I think it's called yokai souls, or it's like demon arts, where specific uh, demons that you fight. You can get their hearts and equip it, and then you could use their one of their attacks or something like that. 
That's mm-hmm. pretty sick. Um, there's a boss, or the first boss, you get his heart, and then you can use his one of his attacks on other enemies. Uh, the only thing is these things aren't just like a summon that you just throw through and it immediately attacks the enemy. They have collision detection, right? So uh, I really won't spoil what the boss is, but the attack is like it summons these two giant uh, ninja stars, essentially, uh, at your sides, and then it goes forward at whatever you're aiming at. Yeah. So I was fighting this snake chick in this hallway, and it's a thin hallway, which is why it sucks, because her attack takes up the whole hallway. But I used my demon art, and the big um, ninja star started spinning up right next to me. And when they went forward, they got stuck in the fucking wall. <laughs> and then I died. So I was pissed. <laughs> so they make you OP without making you too OP. There are some limits to it. Uh, there's a new counter you can do. Um, enemies have this new, I guess, uh, rage state. When their health is a fourth or less, their health bar will start flashing red. And um, this tone will play like a, one of those... Um, Japanese drums will go like doon and then you'll have maybe two or three seconds to I think it's press R2 and circle to perform a yokai counter Mm. Um, but if you don't and you get hit by whatever attack they're charging up you're fucked dude I I remember I died to a regular normal samurai enemy not even one of the cool ones one of the small guys just because I messed up the dodge or uh, didn't counter in time dude so they've added a lot more elements to the game fixed up some things um but it's definitely still uh, a hunt for loot and trying to make your perfect weapon or armor to your play style which i think a lot of people don't realize i think they see it and think oh neo 2 is just dark souls but nah it's it's uh it's a lot more than that man yeah which, which ain't a bad thing so it'll be cool man um have you downloaded it yeah no, yeah, I totally forgot, but I, yeah, I'll actually start it right now because all I need is chain and sickle. Just give me that, and <laughs> I'll like shoot, hit from afar, and that's I'm pretty much gonna just do my my normal routine of ninjutsu: poison the enemy, <laughs> hit him from afar, run away, sweep them if they're chasing me. Yeah, and yeah, yeah that's how I like played through the entire Neo. You know, my cousin was like showing me the his way which is like using the sword and then parrying at the very last second uh-huh, to uh-huh. get behind him and stab him and i was like yeah damn this is super difficult and here i am just tripping the enemy over and over and over and stabbing him while he's on the ground and i'm like see this is how i do it <laughs> <laughs> i will say this there is a kind of a companion or an npc buddy that helps you out in the first level I'll say this mm. much. He carried me through that whole through this whole part of the first level, man. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so funny too because I get I get nervous whenever I see a new enemy in Neo, or in even mm. Dark Souls. If I see a new enemy, because you don't know what his capabilities are, right? Yeah. So I'll walk in and see what an attack is. So there's this one enemy. I had no idea. It looks brand new. It's not a samurai. It's not anything from the first Neo. I walk up to it. It does this charge attack. I ran back to the shrine so fast, dude. I'm not losing my I'm not losing my souls to this thing. Dude. I, I better level up before I try to fight this thing, man. <laughs> so I'm excited. Did they come out with a release date for Neo Two? Uh, I think it was next play? year. Is it? I, mm-hmm. Is it in March as well? It might be the same time Neo release. Yeah, March. I think that's when they released it. Let me see. Okay. All I need to do is beat Sekiro uh-huh. so I could get my spirits back up. And <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should play that tonight. Get uh-huh. all angered and hyped. For like, uh, Neo? Yeah, Neo. Dude, this comes out on the 13th of March. So we have two weeks to play it before uh before final fantasy 7 remake dude wait when is remake coming out oh no wait does that come out the third i'm joking this comes out after this is the worst release date for neo 2 man 
I think. Yeah. Because it comes out the 3rd of March, actually. Oh, first class edition. Oh, it's already out of stock. Final Fantasy VII's yeah. first class March is already 3rd. out of stock, by the way. You already got yours, though, did you? Or Yeah, I already okay. yeah. pre- pre-ordered it. Same, so same, 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 dude. All we have to do, if you don't want it, you could just sell it on the internet for $5,000. <laughs> shit, if it goes for that much, I might do it, dude. I might just do it. <laughs> I'll just buy it digitally and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, Neo 2 looks great. Uh, I've also been playing Outer Worlds. Man, I've put in maybe 20 something hours into this game, dude. And it's it's still great for me, man. I think it's just been so long since I've played Fallout completely. Because the only Fallout I've ever really played was Fallout 3. And then the only Elder Scrolls I played was Oblivion. I bought Fallout 4 and returned it. Uh, couldn't really get into it that quick, and then uh, I think Skyrim. I didn't really like the dragons, dude. You played Skyrim though, right? Negative. Um, I know my cousins and everybody was trying to get me into that game. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, I don't know. It looks really, really, really. Oh, there's like a lot of things to do, but it's yeah. just it didn't stick with me. Like I, I, I tried it, but yeah, but I don't know. I was scared. Stick. I think I was mostly scared of the time commitment. Just yeah. knowing that I no lifed it for two weeks to play Oblivion, I was scared to commit that kind of time <laughs> to a video <laughs> game again. Um, but I think now, and you could tell they've made this, uh, I won't say a bite sized version, but you don't have to be as um, invested with your time into the Outer Worlds as those other games we previously mentioned. Um, my favorite part is because with me, if you give me an option to. Um, talk my way out of a situation or stealth through a situation i'll totally do it right Mm -hmm. um so that's all i've been leveling up all while ignoring gun skills melee weapon skills all that shit i've just become the perfect hacker the perfect uh conversationalist uh the quietest there ever was and then i just have this buffed up sniper rifle that i use from far away if i have to fight um or i try to talk other people into fighting for me um, some cool parts are there's certain quests where you have to go into like an outpost or a satellite that has a bunch of enemies in it or that it's kind of difficult to stealth through. So, for example, in this satellite, there's a lot of robot guards that are walking around. I tried to fight them and I got my ass kicked every single time just because my combat isn't leveled up at all and you could feel it. Um, so what I did was I snuck around a lot and I found this computer terminal where I can hack into it and turn off all the robots. So once I did that, I was able to just walk freely throughout the, throughout the satellite. So that was pretty sick. I think that's, um, a really good mechanic that it's not so easy to go in there. If my stats weren't up to snuff, I could have snuck all the way to that, uh, computer terminal, not have enough engineering or hacking capabilities and still would have to sneak my ass through the rest of the way. With all the robots walking around. It's been hard <laughs> as shit. Uh, there's another one where you try to infiltrate a factory because you have to kill the um, the owner of the factory. And he has guards walking all the way around and there's workers walking all around too. Um, you can get on the intercom and talk people into having a strike and walking out <laughs> of the... <laughs> <laughs> of the of the factory so that's pretty cool that was a good thing too and then there as well i think even though there's robot guards you can hack into a computer and turn them all off or tell them all go back to their charging stations or something um so i think that's what i really enjoy about the game that and in a lot of games there's a morality system right for example uh red dead redemption you can go around if you kill someone on accident you get a little ding and you're karma goes down yeah there's nothing like that in outer worlds i guess it's your personal karma (laughs) you want to feel about the decisions you make they don't tell you whether it's right or wrong and in some cases there is no right or wrong it's just whatever you want to do with uh in that moment so um i think the fact that they made it so ambiguous at points like that and then they give you so much options to tackle the game is fucking great 
Um, and now that I'm thinking about it, it's even becoming more evident that I'll probably like Death Stranding. Because <laughs> I could have gone into these bases, this satellite, this factory. I could have gone in there, guns blazing, and just shot everything up. But no, I crouched around, hit around corners, waited for people to pass to walk through. <laughs> I think that's essentially what Death Stranding is. <laughs> You're just crouching <laughs> and walking through, trying to avoid uh, ghosts and uh, fucking military guys. So I, I just might enjoy Death Stranding, man. <laughs> um, but yeah, Outer Worlds is great. I'll give a full review when I finish. I hope I finish it soon, dude. Um. I've kind of been working a, a night job uh, for my trip to Japan that's coming Ooh. up here in a couple of weeks. And I am quitting this Hell week, yeah. dude. So it's going to be great. It's going to be Make great. Make sure you work. slap all the people that disrespected you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, man, it'll be good times. I'll have a lot more time to, to play video games now, which will be good. Um, I definitely don't recommend it. <laughs> Well, I guess if it's if you have to, if you're short on money and and you have to work two jobs, work two jobs, man. You know, don't don't go broke out there. Um, but if you have a choice, fucking don't do it, dude. You lose your soul, man. Oh, I bet. I haven't even seen you forever. It feels like every time we see each other, I'm like, dude, it's been two years, man. How you been? <laughs> That's true. I mean, at least we like would talk. Once in a while, like now we talk every week, dude, because of podcasts and shit, right? But even then, it feels like forever because throughout the week, we don't really even talk like that, man. Exactly. Yeah, so. I'm like, where where you been, man? Where, how, how's life? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Crazy stuff, dude. Um, what else is going on? I kind of wanted to talk about AI and video games and how it's going to change development of video games. But we could save that for next week, I guess, man. Um, You got anything else going, going on, dude? Mm, nothing yet uh, oh i just was googling randomly but it looks like there's ready selling the the collector's edition for seven hundred dollars whatever on ebay oh okay 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 so, i thought there was an addition above what we got for seven hundred dollars you almost oh no i would have i would have reserved it already <laughs> I was about to say too. I can't quit yet. I got to work another week there. <laughs> <laughs> that is fucking crazy, dude. But oh wow, okay. So they're doubling up the price already. Interesting. Yep. Yep. That's see, but that's kind of trash too, because that guy is selling it, but he doesn't even have it yet. Oh, they do that a lot. Like when, that's especially crap. when it sells out, then. Mm. They reserve their copies, like 20 copies, and uh, then they sell it to across the world kind of thing. Because, you know, I think other countries, too, they, they don't have access to, oh, sure. to some of the stores and sure. whatnot. It doesn't deliver. and Yeah, so they take advantage, definitely, of these people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's crazy, man. Um. If it ever gets to above $1,000, I might do it, dude. <laughs> $700, that's not enough for me yet. That's not enough for me yet. Um, I was going to look up something, dude, to show you. Um, oh, that's right. Earlier we were talking about uh, Dead or Alive, dude. Yes. And I want to say yes, dude. I found the trailer for you, man, and I will Thank send it you. over. Thank you. Thank you, kind man. Has there been like any other dead or alive actual fighting games or have they all just been doing the. Yeah, the. I think six or. I don't even remember what it's at right now. Uh -huh. Six or seven is already coming out. Uh huh. Or. That was the thing. I think it was five. And they were like saying, oh, this is going to be our final one. Uh, fighting game. Okay, I'm and then eight, six I'm, came out. <laughs> I'm, I'm eight seconds into this trailer, and I have to stop it already, dude. I just hear, oh, man. I just hear the flutes from fucking Mirror playing in my head, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I swear that shit conditions you. I swear to God, that shit conditions you, man. <laughs> Whoa, this is like 3D of 3D, 3D. <laughs> You got past eight seconds? Damn, dude, you got past eight seconds, man. God. <laughs> Damn it. Whoa, so, what did I just see? 
Damn it. Yeah. So oh. this is called uh, Dead or Alive Extreme Venus Vacation Second Anniversary. <laughs> uh, God, Godspeed. To... Man. I think I have like two two of these games and I haven't even played it. Like, you know, like played, played it. Uh huh. Too lazy, but uh, I just keep buying it. It's like a never ending addiction. Holy shit, dude. Did you get to 43 seconds, man? No, but let me. Okay, go to, go to, go to 40 seconds and then look on the right hand side, dude. 40 seconds. 35. Okay, looking. Ooh. Okay, okay, okay. Whoa. Rewind. <laughs> like, what the hell is that? Her butt crack is like a centimeter long, dude. Well, I, have to, I have to see if it's a centimeter long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking video see, games. But half I, of these people, I don't even know. Yeah. Half of them, I don't even know. <laughs> But see, this is what's tight, I guess. So I, this is something you and I always praise, I feel like, is that uh, intellectual properties that make different types of games. You know, like Persona makes a rhythm game, but their core is the RPGs. Um, Dead or Alive can make fighting games, and they have been making fighting games, but they could also have this volleyball vacation game, too. <laughs> 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 That's tight as hell, so... That's kind of funny, man, that they're doing this. Ah, ah, no shame, man. I'm with it 100%, dude. I'm glad Me they're too. doing shit like this, dude. Me too. <laughs> Just switch it up <laughs> a little bit. But it's crazy, too. How could they get away with this? Aren't there those crazy um, censorship laws in uh, in Japan for video games? Especially for Sony, only right? Just only when revealing something so yeah but other than that they're pretty open that's why nakiara uh -huh. you go into a store it's video games going to the next store it's completely adult rated you uh -huh. know and it's like there's nothing stopping it it's, uh -huh. it's just out in the open uh -huh. Uh -huh. so you'll see <laughs> 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 fucking can't wait dude good times man. It's gonna be good times <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think that's all I got this week, man. You got anything else, dude? No, that's it. All right. So that is it for us this week. Um, it's fucking November already. Next thing you know, it's going to be 2021, man. Hell yeah. And we'll have all eight parts of Final Fantasy VII Remake to play. Um, so yeah, we'll see you guys next week. But until then, Rick... Got a question? Uh, yeah. So, what is the first thing you're gonna do in Akihabara? Um, probably take a picture. No, 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 no. What do yes. you mean? First thing? Yeah, you gotta like, <clears throat> like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go visit that one store that Rick recommended. Oh, okay, yeah, that that's what I'll do, dude. It's <laughs> the, the, the third floor. Immediately go to the third floor of any building there, right? Because <laughs> it's at the first two levels. It. That's pretty. That's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> you can close your eyes, spin around, and you like point, and you're like, "I'm gonna go in that store, and it's gonna be on the third floor." <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! All right, we'll see you guys next week. Peace.